All right, everybody, so welcome uh, to this video. We're going to show you guys how to uh, winterize a Sea-Doo uh, Wave Runner as well as uh, most of the other Wave Runners can be winterized using this same technique. So uh, we just pulled it out of the water. You can see it's still dripping uh, water uh, from the exhaust and the uh, drain port, and uh, we'll just kind of take it one step at a time. So uh, the first thing you want to do um, on the back of your Wave Runner or Jet Ski, you'll notice you have a little plug here. This is like the drain plug, so you want to unscrew this and leave that out for the entire winter so that air can circulate in the engine compartment and you can drain out any excess water um, that you might have in there from using it all season. Now the next step you want to do is you want to blow any excess water out of your exhaust system um, just by starting the engine out of the water for just a brief couple of seconds. Um, you don't want to run it for too long, otherwise you can burn up part of your uh, impeller or any other engine components that are cooled by the water. So we're just going to fire it up, put the key on. Just like that, just to blow any other excess water. And you can see on the ground here that there was some water in there that we blew out. So. So the next thing now, we want to pull the seat off. So we just took the seat off of the uh, seat. Yes, yeah, so it's got an 80 horsepower uh, Bombardier engine in here. Um, so what you want to do is you want to find the intake cooling tube or hose. Um, and on the older motors, it's pretty straightforward to find them. Um, so here's this right here, and you can it's kind of hard to tell, but it comes in way back here right in this little it's really hard to tell here let's see there we go it comes in right here and this is the impeller housing so what happens is the impeller pressurizes the water and there's a little port down there that allows the pressurized water to kind of squirt up into this tube and then it goes around through the actual head part of it goes into the exhaust and then the rest of it gets ejected out of this one into the uh, drain port in the back of the sea dew so you want to find this hose that goes in or on some of the newer ones in the back here by the impeller you should have it looks like a little screw for a hose kind of up in the top left corner kind of way back there that's not that's for my reverse gate um, and this one's too old to have the flush system but um, you can use that same thing as well okay so now that we've localized both of these tubes what you want to do is actually take the hose off. So on mine, you see how I have an arrow that says going this direction. So this is the outflow. This one here is the inflow. So I'm gonna remove this hose clamp. Okay, so now I've just loosened this hose clamp with my screwdriver. Now you wanna just gently pull the hose off and then you wanna keep that hose clamp, okay? So we'll let the hose just kinda of fall down. I'm gonna take this hose clamp and set it up here and we're gonna to go to the next step. So next step here is I have a cheapo sump pump with a cutoff garden hose on it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the end of this hose and we're gonna put it on to that nub where we pulled off the cooling hose, okay? So let's do that here. You can get a cheap sump pump or water pump, anything that'll pressurize a liquid. You can get them for about, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks at a home improvement store. So we're just gonna put it on like that, okay? But remember we kept this hose clamp, so we're gonna actually, it's kinda hard to do this while I'm videotaping, there we go. Put the hose with the hose clamp on there and we're gonna tighten that down. So what this is doing is artificially um, imitating the intake cooling line um, that we would normally have when the jet ski is on the water. So now we got that hose clamp all nice and tight, so now what we do is we take the sump pump and the bucket and we kind of just put it underneath the impeller and the exhaust so we're able to catch any excess fluid um, so we can kind of recycle it. So the fluid that we're using here today is just, we have Peak RV Marine Antifreeze and I don't know, here's an ISO bar. It's kind of the same stuff, you can reuse it. Um, you know, I'll pour all four of these into this bucket and then uh, when I'm done winterizing I'll actually take the hose and I'll refill the buckets or the containers back up with any excess that you have. Make sure you use the pink stuff or the green stuff. Don't use uh, the auto antifreeze. It's not the same stuff and it's not really good for uh, lake water when you put it back in the water in the spring. 
Okay, so I poured uh, three of these antifreeze containers uh, into this bucket here so the sump pump's got some water underneath it. Um, now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to start the jet ski and then I will plug the sump pump in. Do not run the jet ski without the sump, or I'm sorry, do not run the sump pump without the jet ski running. Otherwise you can put water into the exhaust system and into the cylinders and that's not good. So make sure you start the machine first and then plug in the sump pump. Okay, so the jet ski's running, now we're going to plug it in here. Now we got it plugged in, now we look for it. There we go. So that's antifreeze, it's coming out of the exhaust system and it's coming out up here. So we let this run for about 30 seconds until we get it all nice and mixed up in there. Okay, so after we've let it run uh, for about 30 seconds and recycled all the antifreeze, um, we're about done here. That's the, the brunt of it. Uh, the last two things you want to do is you want to pull the plugs and spray some fogging oil down into the cylinders as well as pull the air filter off. So here's the air filter. Um, you want to pull that off and spray some fogging oil down in there as well while it's running uh, just for a couple of seconds. And the last thing you want to do is disconnect the battery, and you're good to go for the rest of the season. Oh, one thing else I should mention too. Make sure uh, you put some fuel stabilizer in it. That'll help keep your gas good for next spring when you fire it up. So, hope this helps. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll try my best to help you.